like you to imagine that you and I have just installed a backtrack system. The Ethernet's great, works like a champ, the wired. We've also done the update and that went good. And now we wanna start working with wireless. One of the things we just wanna be aware of is that we can alter or manipulate the signal strength on the adapter in the backtrack machine. Depending on the country that you live in, there's very likely a regulatory agency that's controlling the airwaves. What do you mean, Keith, controlling? Well, let's say, take an example. Let's take FM radio or AM radio. If you tune into your favorite station, you're looking to hear whatever that station is broadcasting. You're not gonna be looking for five or six different people broadcasting on that same exact frequency. Well, in the world of wireless for computer networks, we have a couple of ranges of frequency. We have a 2.4 and a range of frequencies in that space. And up at five gigahertz, we have another range of frequencies. But just because they're open and available and we don't have to register with anybody to use them, there's still some guidelines on how much signal strength we can use when we transmit on these frequencies. So here's what I've discovered. On a backtrack system that has an alpha card, I've seen normally the default set to 20. And this is DBM, which equates to about 100 milliwatts. So if we wanted a stronger signal on our backtrack device to transmit, we could go ahead and pretend, potentially raise this up higher. I think the maximum in the United States that we can go is like 27 DBM, which would be about half a watt, 500 milliwatts. And then if we cranked it all the way up to 30 dBm, that would be one full watt of power, <laughs> which depending on where you live, that may or may not be legal. Now, a couple of things. I certainly am not encouraging anybody to do anything outside the scope of what is totally legal. So let's say you do live in a country where it is legal to set this to 30. I also want to point out that your hardware, the actual wireless adapter would have to support that as well. And if you start using more signal strength, there's gonna be more heat and there's a risk of possibly <laughs> damaging some circuitry. So even if you could crank this all the way up to some really high number, you'd wanna make sure to two things. Number one, you're not breaking any laws. Number two, you're not gonna damage your equipment. Another idea that I've seen people toy with is, well, maybe we change the country code. We tell, <laughs> we tell our computer and backtrack and the wireless device that we're in a different country where it's legal to have those higher rates, and then we could use that. Well, again, the goal is you wanna be legal for whatever you're doing. If you're doing penetration testing for a network, you would want authorization for that. And if we're gonna be working with the airwaves, it would be best to stay legal within the legal realm of what we're allowed to do in our country. So if we did wanna change the country code, let's say we are going to a country where we can actually crank that value up. We wanna change the country code and we could do that by, here's the ISO listing of the country codes. So I believe the maximum I could set it for, if I set my country code for US, would be 27 dBm. And also just be aware that people use different frequencies potentially in different countries. So if I wanna work with my 2.4 range with channels one through 11 and the overlapping sets, I would wanna make sure that the country code was right so I could participate on the frequencies that are gonna be used by that network. So the actual country code is sort of like a throttler that once you set the country code, which has the right ranges, it also is going to control based on that country code, the maximum DBM that we can set the interface transmission level to. So let's start, I've got four SSH sessions open to the same backtrack server. Now, why would I do that? The primary reason is I wanted the visual real estate with a bigger font and make it really easy for you and I both to see everything that's gonna go ahead and happen. And what I'd like to do is have a one screen. I've got four sessions. One of these sessions, I'd like to go ahead and use tail. Now tail will redirect output from a file to the screen. And now if we need more help on the actual tail command, how could we get it? Well, it's simple. We simply type in man space tail, and that's gonna give us the manual, the man pages on this program called tail. We'll press enter and it simply says, okay, it's gonna go ahead and print the last 10 lines of each file to standard output with more than one file, proceed, blah, 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 with a whole bunch of options there. So what I'd like to do in this window, I'd like to use the tail program and have it read in a file. And this is gonna be our messages file from a log folder. And by doing this, we can see any new messages that come in. Now the N refers to number of lines. The default is the last 10 lines. I don't wanna see the last 10 lines. I just wanna have a live feed of any new messages that show up in this file. So now any events that happen based on configuration changes we make, we can go back to tab one, this one, and take a look at them right here. Another tool that I'd like to use is called IW. Now, how would we get help for that? Well, let's take a look at the man pages for that as well. With man space, 
IW. And this is the command that lets us work with and change the properties of wireless devices. So that's the IW command. And to get out of this man page, I'm gonna hit Q to exit out. And we're gonna be using the IW command to change our transmit levels for the wireless radio in this backtrack device. The next thing that you and I ought to do is we ought to shut down the wireless LAN zero interface in the event that we want to just demonstrate changing the country code and setting the actual level higher than 27. So if the interface is turned off, it's down, it won't be sending any signals and we'll be in the clear. And it probably is already by default, but I'm going to go ahead and set my country code to US just to make sure that it's where it should be. And with that, it should allow the default standard channels here in the United States for the 2.4 gigahertz range. It also should restrict me from setting my DBM level higher than 27. Before we make any changes, let's just go ahead and use the iwconfig command just to verify where we're at. And this says right here that our, we're currently at 20 DBM, which if we go back to our chart, that was like 100 milliwatts of power for transmit signal. So let's change it. Let's set it up to 27, which I believe is the max. So we'll do iwconfig WLAN0, transmit power 27. We'll run iwconfig again, just see what it is. And it comes up as 27. So there's the direct comparison. That's fantastic. So still within our legal range, uh, but we're increasing the transmit power for this wireless interface. So just to be sure, let's go ahead and try to set the transmit power to 28 and see if it takes that or not. So we'll do iwconfig WLAN0 TX power 28. It says, oh, sorry, that's a bad argument. That's not going to work, that 28. Now, if we change the rules a little bit, if we said, oh, let's use the country code of Bolivia, for example, which allows higher than 27, it should work. So over here in this window, we have our tail running on the messages file. So any new message that show up should come to this screen here. So let's go ahead and change that for a moment. Just, and again, the radio is turned off. So we'll set it to country code of BO. And if we look over at this, that icon changed. So it took that change. Let's go ahead and see if we can change the transmit power to something higher than 27. So we'll make a road trip back over to our main console that we're working with. And we'll say IW config wireless LAN zero transmit power 28 didn't complain this time. And just to verify, we'll go ahead and take a look at it with just an IW config. So now it's set to 28. Now it's very likely in <laughs> very likely that the channels are not exactly the same as they are here in the States. So I'm not sure how usable with this, this would be, but I wanted to give you an example of what controls that setting. And I also want to remind you that it's up to the actual hardware. Now this alpha card, I believe is capable of doing a full milliwatt, which means we could set this to 30 and it would still operate. You'd want to be careful and not melt down your interface card as well, because the more power you send through something, the more heat, and if the circuits can't take it, you might cause some damage. Nobody wants that either. Now the interface has been shut down, so we're not actually doing transmission because we are going to be using this wireless interface. Let's go ahead and set it back to its defaults. I want to go ahead and set the transmit power back to 20, which is 100 milliwatts. And I'm also going to bring the interface up. And that may take just a second for the interface to respond and to go ahead and bring itself up out of a shutdown state. And so we'll wait for it. And there it is. The other thing I think we had to do is set the country code back to US because we are going to be working with frequencies and the channels here in the US in these demos anyway. So I want to make sure I don't mess my own self up there by having the wrong country code. And just to verify it's all back in shape, we'll do a IF config for wireless LAN interface zero and it looks like it's up and good to go.